general is through the eyes and the ears. And who controls that? The Illuminati control that. They're trying to disconnect us from multidimensional infinities. And then once they've disconnected people, they then program this lower level of our consciousness with a reality that suits them. If, we, if there's a reality out there pertaining to any alien influence, we need to sort out the government misinformation and disinformation and mind manipulation techniques that they're using. I know for a fact that the plan is to make all of us feel totally helpless. That what's happening is beyond our realm to affect because we've been taken over by aliens. That our independence day is dawning. So beware of that. Understand that those criminals have been keeping information and technology from us under their blanket of national security. They are 25 years ahead of us at least. They're way ahead. So when they say, it's aliens, it's aliens, and they show us some incredible technology, don't, don't fall into the trap of feeling totally helpless that this is beyond our realm to affect. Superstition begins where knowledge leaves off. And they have been keeping knowledge from us for a long time. People have all kinds of belief systems. And I'm sure each and every one of you has various and different belief systems as well. I'm not saying that there's no such thing as aliens. That, that would be foolish of me to even, even say anything like that at all. But what I am saying is that my, it was my experience that these were people claiming to be aliens. Some people in this world are about to destroy the sovereignty of nations, take away our Bill of Rights. The UFO thing is integrally tied into this in some way. I'm not exactly sure how, but if extraterrestrials are real, then they're controlling everything. Believe me. If they're not real, they're being used uh, as, a, as, a, as a threat from without to scare people into coming into this one world global unity of humanity in order to face that external threat. In the process, we're going to lose. Uh, the ordinary man will lose. You need to understand, disinformation is deliberate deceit to hide other things. And so uh, there's so much of that. And, uh, and some of it is surprisingly well-sponsored disinformation. I'm going to sum up this talk and mention an overview of the alien agenda. The alien agenda is really decimate the planet to take the remaining human subjects as slaves and the aliens would use this planet for their own means. My question I'd like to ask is this, if the aliens have a 1,200 IQ, can speak all these languages and are so powerful, what prevents them from just taking over? Well, that's a good question. We are an alien species to them and our germs have a tendency to kill them. <clears throat> They're also a dying race, and they're in far worse condition than anybody with the worst case of terminal cancer. They are in need of us to some degree. And, uh, and some of it is surprisingly well-sponsored disinformation. So I think my, my question is actually to, my question is to Clifford Stone. You, you said that you had seen aliens on a or a craft that had crashed. I wondered if you could describe what they looked like. I could. I could, but it would probably take a whole lot of time. The reason I state that, when I got out in 1989, we had cataloged 57 different species. Uh, you have individuals that look very much like you and myself that could walk among, among us and you wouldn't even notice the difference.
Does that explain some of the uh, visual glances of these things? They seem to just simply disappear. They're gone. Exactly. I mean, they're they're appearing out of nowhere uh, and then disappearing right in right in front of people. And that's why scientists who have no access to grind, they just say that it doesn't make that much sense. And also, if they're just trying to observe us to uh, take account of what we're doing on Earth. I mean, after a while, after so many months or years or centuries, it kind of gets old. They either would take us over or they've already discovered all the information they need to know about Earthlings. And so they're just going to take us over or make first contact and just sort of uh, do what they need to do next uh, to endlessly observe us. It doesn't, doesn't make any sense. It's something where, and also, see, if there, we have all these sightings, as you know, much better than I do. Um, why, where are they landing? We don't see them getting out to get anything to drink or to eat. We don't see them, um, they've never no. tried to make, you know, contact with any large amount of people in a major city. Um, and, and so this doesn't, and also all the endless medical procedures that the people who have claimed to have been abducted, you know, why the endless medical procedures? I mean, if we're talking about such an advanced race of alien beings, they don't need to do that over and over and over again. Interesting perspective. Let's talk about some of the facts out there of evidence that may support your conclusion that the UFOs are spiritual phenomena, not physical, like so many other people also believe. What, what can we pinpoint again? Well, again, it's something where you cannot have a material or a physical being penetrating the ground, penetrating the water, appearing in front of people, then disappearing instantly, and then also changing colors, sometimes only when they're accelerating with every color in the spectrum has been recorded. Uh, many UFOs coming and making one UFO, one UFO breaking apart and then going into multiple UFOs. It's, it's, it, doesn't, it doesn't make sense. And then not, not only just that, but to get into the fact of how far they're traveling uh, and the speed that they would have to travel and just the other problems with cosmic dust and traveling at the speed of light and then running into the, those bits of cosmic dust, the explosions that would be created, the amount of energy that would be consumed uh, and traveling from these distances. Um, just all those kinds of things really scream out that you're dealing with a spiritual phenomenon, not a material or physical phenomenon. There does seem to be a deception here, because I've always wondered, you know, my gosh, if they're that benevolent, if they're that understanding of humankind, make yourself available. In yeah, and your... and, and that's, that's why, um, you know, some of, these sci some of these other scientists have said that they, they seem to be trying to set people up to, to deceive them as if they are aliens, but the facts just say that they, they can't be that, that there's something else. It, it, doesn't, it doesn't make any sense, and there's something else, a psychological deception that's going on here. And many of these scientists say, I don't know what it is, but we've concluded that it's got to be that. It's got to be something bigger is going on here than just them trying to show people that, yes, you know, here's a UFO that you're seeing now, we are aliens, that, there, that there's got to be something else going on here on top of the fact that the characteristics of them show that they just cannot be some material or physical craft. Do you think, do you think humans are involved in the deception? I'm losing my voice here. I've got to pop it back. Um... As far as inside, I think there, there have been deliberate hoaxes that have been perpetrated. And, uh, you know, it's an interesting statement. I mean, there are many that could be quoted. Um, but uh, Gordon Creighton, who I, I know you know of him, yeah. uh, probably, who died in uh, 2003, he made this statement in the British journal Flying Saucer Review. He said, quote, there seems to be no evidence yet that any of these craft or beings originate from outer space.
They appear to have the ability to materialize and dematerialize without a trace. One of the great mysteries of the UFOs isn't seeing them, is trying to figure out where are they when you don't see them. Some people say, well, they're from another galaxy. There's lot, most physicists will debunk that for lots of reasons. They seem to pose that way, but they're for lots of, if they came, you know, if they, there are that many coming from another galaxy, you think you'd sense the traffic. We'll come to back with some more reasonable explanations, and you're going to discover. The, the two top researchers in the, in the last century, really, is uh, Jacques Vallée, France, and uh, J. Allen Hynek, the American. Now, J. Allen Hynek was uh, head of astronomy at, at Cornell, and he set out to debunk this nonsense about UFOs, and he became one of the most ardent, competent, balanced researchers in the trade. J. Allen Hynek, he, he died a few years ago. Both of these respected researchers came to the conclusion that they're not intergalactic. For lots of physics, there are a lot of physical, uh, physics rebuttals to that conjecture. They both argued that these things are demonic. Their term. They've written many, many books. You can uh, check them out. These are not uh, uh, religious people. They're not people with any kind of personal agenda. But they came to the conclusion that these things, on the one hand, and, and by the way, we, we take for granted that we strip away the nonsense and the hoaxes, set that aside. There's tens of thousands of files you have to wall through. When you, when you cut through all that,